that one and that one. That's all. I get. I'm sorry. Not in a place to where I can talk at the moment. Hey, I just started broadcasting. Okay. I'm going to try to do a real quick one, just like 15 minutes or 10 okay. minutes or so. Yep. Hello, friends. Sorry for my messy hairdo. I need a haircut, don't I? <laughs> are we up and running? We are. All right. Good. Let's see if we have Facebook friends. Anyway, YouTube people, here we are. This is Daily Art Adventure number... Get it right here, 936. I'm calling this a quickie. Maybe this will be the, the beginning of a new, a new thing. Oh, I held the clapper up and I didn't clap it, did I? There. <laughs> now we're official. All right, let's see if I, by any chance. Yeah, it looks like it's something. got Facebook friends. What fun. Technology is great. Hello, Ben's Art. Thank you for speaking up and saying hi. All right. This is going to be a quick, as I just already said once, the medium I'm using is, as typical for me, is Liquin Original. It's a, it's a gel, comes out as a, um, the consistency of what? Mustard or ketchup? Yeah, ketchup. <laughs> and stays on my, on my palate, so I don't have to, I don't have to have a, uh, a cup, you know, to, um, like like you do with a uh, lingerie and hello patsy good to have you and david mercer um two paintings i'll show them to you real quickly just in case somebody doesn't have time for the whole thing so this is i i've done the final edit and i've done broken color as you can tell at a glance because it's got all this broken color in it i might have overdone it <laughs> I'm always thinking that. I'm always thinking when I do the broken color, it's like, man, I might have overdone it this time. But the good news is that doing a glaze on top of it actually helps unify the, the palette. So um, that's very close to finished painting. And this one is not at all close to finished. This is um, just acrylic. So this, on this one, I'll be doing my first layer of oil, right? So it's like two different glazes all right now this is the routine this is what I make my students say when you get to this when you're right before you do a glaze you say about your painting you must say well I like it pretty well I just wish it was more blank <laughs> and you cannot say more better <laughs> no the <laughs> Say, I, I like it pretty well. See, some of you choke on that. I don't. I really do like it pretty well. But um, I wish it was more blank. And the blank is a color. Because that's what I'm about to do. I'm about to glaze it. Okay, so I'm thinking now. I feel like this guy's head is too big. So there's a little... I'm going to... And I, I'm not... I like this face and this face pretty well. I'm not sure about this one and this is the person I'm doing the painting for so I really have to get it right um, I'm still thinking you're allowed to put your you're almost required to put your chin in your hand believe it or not I, I really wish most of it was warmer even though it's already quite warm all right I'm just gonna I'm gonna proceed with with that the nice thing about a glaze is if you don't like it, you can wipe it right off. Whoops, it turns out I don't have the color I want, which is uh, Oxide Red, one of my favorite brands for Oxide Red is Charvin from Marseille, France. They were the people that took me to France one time several years ago to check out their new paint. All right, so, and who else is here? Shadow on the three ladies would give the dresses a round look. That's probably a great idea, Dave, a little bit more roundedness. All right. So this is pure oxide red. 
I, by the way, I love doing this at a wedding reception. <laughs> when the acrylic painting is all done, everybody's ooing and eyeing. <laughs> and then I take, then I take an oil glaze and just do something like this to it. And I just love to hear the gasps. <laughs> a little bit of showmanship there. I don't usually do uh, a glaze with just one, just one pure color. This is a little bit unusual. As you can see, the oxide red is just a beautiful um, orange, very warm uh, orange brown, very close to burnt sienna. Right, I, now I called this broadcast The Art of Glazing. Now I'll go ahead and tell you, for anybody who's new, I usually do more than one color, and indeed I'll probably do that here. Uh, but as soon as I glaze, then I anti-glaze. I lift paint off uh, with a rag. And even though I like the, the cast, the, the tone, the color that I just gave this painting, it's too much of a good thing. So don't panic though, because I'll just, I'll, I'll pick up a rag and lift out. But I, again, I don't erase, I paint with a rag. Now, let's see. I'm gonna pick up some, I'm not cleaning my brushes. My brushes still have plenty of oxide red on them, right? Again, but don't be confused, oxide red is a brown. Uh, but I just picked up some, um, permanent rows and I'm operating partly a little bit right now on previous experience knowledge understanding and that is that permanent rows almost always looks great <laughs> on a painting it's kind of a funny you know funny rule to, to say that any color always looks good that because you know that can't be true but for all practical purposes, it's almost almost always true. <laughs> yeah, so I just reddened this corner and this corner a little bit. This corner had quite a bit of, of green in it, so the red is working quite well. By the by the way, there's the art of the art of glazing going across the color wheel to complements when you're glazing is almost always a good idea if so I didn't do that here. The painting was already quite warm and I made it even warmer. But down here there was quite a bit of green and I did red. So that's, that's what I mean. Our eye loves this trick of we don't even know what to call this color. It's red on, transparent red on top of green. We, lo we just love that. All right. Let's see if there's any. Yeah, I think I can do some. Again, I'm not going to clean my brushes. So. You know, I'm getting a, a mixture of stuff. I'm going to put a little bit of phthalo blue and a little, little bit of ultramarine. So I have dirty blue now. And I think that this corner can be blue. So, and, and obviously also I'm, I'm vignetting, <laughs> turning that, the word vignette into a verb. <laughs> to create a vignette is to, I'm vignetting it. <laughs> I'm not sure that it is a verb, but... That is around here. Same thing up here, I believe. Again, so I'm, I'm not only am I creating a vignette, I'm also um, anti-yellowing. That's the kind of language I think about a lot when I'm doing glaze. A glaze, I'm, I think of it. I don't think of me making this corner blue. I think of me making this corner less yellow or anti-yellowing it. Um, I think that's about all. I, th I think I think that looks pretty good. So I'm going to put these brushes down. I won't clean them right now and pick up a rag. Good, a couple rags. And now I'm going to lift out. And this is pro this is all I'm going to do on this painting probably um, in this broadcast is because I'm, I'm trying to make it a quickie because they're about to serve supper around here. The natives are restless. Oh, let me, uh, 
Let me pick you guys up for just a second and show you one of the neat side benefits of glazing. You see there, there was a fair amount of impasto or impasto thick paint, texture, thick texture paint on these uh, illuminated numbers, right? And when you do a glaze on top of impasto, the glaze gets stuck in the cracks. And unless you rub it really hard, which I'm not going to do, you get this really cool sort of antiquing, um, at least that's what I would call it, antique effect. Because the, the brown is stuck in the cracks. Right, this lady's music can be lighter, this lady's hair can be lighter. Um, And I'm going to bring some of these uh, studio lights back up to, again, if I rub really hard, then I get all the paint off. If I rub fairly gently, like I'm doing right now, I just take some of the glaze off. Does that make sense? And if I really want to get all the glaze off, then I would dip this, then I would dip the rag in turpinoid. Very, very rarely do that. All right, same thing down here. I just want to bring some of this, just any place that I want it to be lighter now. I lift off with the rag. One of the neat things about this process of doing a glaze is that it, it but because I glaze, therefore the whole painting gets darker, and then I lift off certain areas, I achieve a, sort of a heightened contrast in the painting, which usually is a good thing. Most of our paintings don't suffer from too much contrast. More often our paintings suffer from not quite enough range of values. All right? So, and let me turn off this light and see if you guys get any better. Not much. It's bad either way. I'm sorry about all that glare. And hello, Bonnie and Karen and Gwen and Melinda. What fun. All kinds of friends on Facebook. Glad my camera's working today. And over here on... on uh, YouTube, Wisconsin, Greg. Thank you, man. Thanks. And Ray. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> Clapping for me. <laughs> and Nicholas, Uncle. Yeah, little <laughs> Frank Sinatra. Sinatra. All right. So I think I'm done with that painting. I, I don't mean done. I'm, I'm just done glazing it. Um, I have a little bit of touch up on his face, her face, I'm sorry, and his face and then a little bit of sparkle and palette knife, and I'll be done with that painting. We have, we have, the natives are restless, ringing the doorbell. All right. So this is a, uh, an acrylic painting. So it, it's early, early stage of development. Make sure both cameras are pointing in the same direction. All right. And same drill, I say to my students, this is what, repeat after me. I like it pretty much. I just wish it was more blank or less blank. Now, okay, so in this case, all right, it's easy for me. I do want this to be a green painting. It's a woodland painting and so on and so forth. But I wish it was less green. All right, so that, that's pretty easy. I'm going to anti-green it, which is probably, when I'm, in anti-mode, when I'm trying to anti-color a painting, this is the most common, an to anti-green a painting. So those of you, anybody watching me who does landscapes on a regular basis, and I know you might not, you might not use glazing, and you might paint, and that's okay, but if you want to be a better painter, <laughs> glaze. I used most of my liquid up in that last painting, so let's put a little bit more. Okay, so ant, how do you anti-green something? By redding it, right? But I'm going to start mild and safe with oxide red, which again is a reddish, orangish brown. And I'm going to warm up all this stuff in here that's, that was white. Now it's, now it's much warmer.
and okay, we'll put those brushes down and pick up some smaller ones. And I'm going to do some some local color, some realistic color for a moment. That is that is blue. Okay, so I've mixed up a little bit of phthalo and ultramarine because I want my I want my sky up here to be bluer. That looks good. Oh, same thing with the water. I want the water to be a little bit bluer. So I'm being a little bit precise now. This is a little bit unusual for me to, to glaze even at this uh, degree of carefulness or detail using smaller brushes. Um, and then there's a waterfall, a rippling brook and waterfall down here. So I'm going to make that. All right, and then I, I think um, without cleaning these two brushes, I can just pick up some permanent rose, which is such a beautiful color in it when, when made transparent. And uh, let's, let's anti-green some stuff here. And that, and that really is the inner inside talk. That really is how I talk to myself, even if I'm not broadcasting. It, it, here's why. I would never say, okay, I'm going to make these trees red. I mean, that's absurd. You know, that, that my, my logical whatever just says, red? Why, what do you mean? Is this fall scene? No, 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 no. Why? So, no, I don't say I'm going to make it red. I literally say to myself, I'm going to anti-green or ungreen. I usually say anti. I'm going to un anti greenify. <laughs> Same thing. This is a little bit too green down here. So I'm doing, now I've got kind of a raspberry color, um, purplish, uh, purplish red on my brushes. Yeah, that looks good. Same thing up here. So in other words, these trees are still green. The painting is still very green. It's just not as green as it was. Does that make sense? That's what it means to anti-green something. It does, it's still a green painting. These are still, it's still full of, you know, the, the feel of, of a woodland scene um, with lots of, lots of, um, greenery and foliage and so forth. Verdant. <laughs> we sound intelligent if we speak Latin or French or something. So still a verdant scene. <laughs> I don't like this. Um, right now I'm anti-yellowing. I'm not crazy. There's, I ended up with some yellow down there that I was not crazy about. I'm, again, I'm being a little more careful now than, than, than I usually am when doing black glazes, but I'm glad I'm getting to show you a range. Again, this is me being careful in a, in a glaze. Because usually I just do orange brushes and I am very abstract. All right, it's better. I like it. I just stood back and looked at it sort of with fresh eyes now that I've, now that I have de-greenified it. <laughs> Now that I've anti-greened it, ungreened it, whatever, whichever. we're making this stuff up. Can you tell? Whatever, whatever you want to call it. Um, the painting is much warmer, and uh, and I like it. Just a quick comment about the color of light bulbs. People ask me all the time. I I do. I this is not an art light bulb. It's a regular Home Depot Lowe's Home Improvement light bulb. And I'm sure that it has a Kelvin number on it, but I forget what it was. Um, uh, uh, artists are, are all gaga about Kelvin numbers, you know, blue, yellow range. And artists are all gaga about northern light. Whoops, we just lost our Facebook, at least for a minute. Um, which always seems funny to me. 
Ron Shevlin, oh my goodness. I hope you can still hear me. Always seems funny to me because, listen, the people who buy your painting are probably not as crazy about Northern Light or Kelvin as you are. They're just gonna put it up in their living room or their den or their bedroom and look at it. So I, I'm not, I am not crazy bonkers. Uh, so I have uh, this room has four, you know, floodlights in the ceiling, and it's a mixture. I have different colored lights in the ceiling. Ron Silva, what are you saying? Oh man, <laughs> that I think that's a prophetic dream. I think that means we're supposed to get together. I mean, good grief! You're only 14 or 15 hours away now instead of 40 or 50, so much more feasible. All right, I'm gonna keep moving right along. Like I said, this is gonna be a, a quickie. So same drill, uh, picking up um, a rag. By the way, so these rags have paint and liquid in them. As soon as I finish this broadcast, I am gonna go wash my hands. So just, just in case you're wondering about hygiene. I feel like that's reasonably safe. You may not, but um, I feel like I'm being reasonably cautious by washing my hands pretty quick or 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 if I don't have time if I if I continue to broadcast um, I would wipe my hands with a cleaning wipe product like that not not disinfectant but oil cutting oil and getting this stuff off my hands <laughs> it sounds like I was a little bit rude Ron continued painting while we were visiting that's pretty realistic All right, so the next step for this painting, I'm not gonna do it right now, but the, I'll tell you what the next step is, is my fuzz layer, where I do translucent. That means I have some white opaque paint on my brushes, but I apply it very thinly, so it's translucent like wax paper. Or, and it, it, it's, it, 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 it pushes the atmospheric perspective. And I already know, just by looking at this, I'm gonna do some faint blue, pale blue, uh, again, see-through, so it's not, it's translucent, not transparent. I just did transparent. Anyway, the next layer is, is the glow layer or the fuzz layer. And then, and then I, I begin drawing details again after that. Of course, I have a great big eagle right there that's completely blue at the moment. <laughs> My eagle is certainly not going to stay blue. But there you go. I, I hope that was in, interesting and informative. Um, the, the painting, again, the, the, I've pushed the contrast a little bit because the whole painting got slightly darker. And then with the rags, I lifted out some light areas so it's a little bit more contrasty, a little bit richer color. It's still a, a green scene, you know, green forest scene but it's not quite as green, and I like that. It's a little bit more color balanced, perhaps, you could say. It's more color interesting. There, there, that's really the truth. It's more interesting color than it was just a few minutes ago. All right, who else is saying hi? Hello, Susan. Susan, I, I, I don't, nothing's plugged in, so there shouldn't be any buzz tonight. <laughs> Thanks for your service lately. <laughs> Is that mist between bushes and the sky? Yes, yes. Down in here, like, yeah, the, the, absolutely, you're correct. Who else? Um, David, you're exactly right. The tree needs some bright orange. And hello, Hannah. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Well, this is fun, and it was really short. So maybe I'll start doing some quickies just at times like this when I can just squeeze one in real quickly.